Hello guys, uh, I'm gonna show you a little my herb garden that is looking uh, pretty good right now. Uh, it's also something that is nice to see because in a relatively small area you can pack in lots of different plants and that they require uh, very little maintenance. This is one of the areas where I do the least amount of work. Um, I can do some weeding. Everyone saying why? Maybe every month as you can see like i, I have weeds popping uh, up here and there but i don't worry too much about it also watering i basically i think i watered this one time this year and it's a pretty pretty dry season because uh, we are not having uh, good rains so it's something that i think anybody could, could have uh, it just takes it's like a collection now you add the uh, one plant you start with like a couple right? like i think my first herb like perennial herb was this sage here and then you know i got an oregano and then the hyssop came then the year after i had lovage and uh, thyme and another kind of oregano and then i kept adding 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 and uh, then you get you know some flowers in there and then I have still some annuals that I'm going to show you, but it's uh, probably it's one of the things that I always going to have is the herb garden because it's really low maintenance. You, you can leave it. One year you can just forget about it and just let it go. And it still is going to produce. And the year after you can uh, work on it a bit, but uh, it looks great. I love it. So I'm actually going to start from this side that is more a work in progress. Because my idea is to uh, eventually have the whole area with the perennials, but you know uh, I can't. I have to, to, you know, I'll buy a couple a year and just keep adding. And uh, herbs now I have all the one that I use, so mostly it's gonna be more like uh, medicinal herbs and uh, flowers that I'm gonna be adding. But let's starting from this side. That is where. There's mostly the annuals, that is some poppies here, uh, self-seeded from last year. And I have my hot peppers that even if the weather wasn't great, uh, well, this is the lemon habanero, I'm not expecting nothing. That is still trying to, to push some flowers through, but uh, way too cold for it. Even for the, this is the cayenne, if I remember correctly. Uh, let's see. Yeah, that's a cayenne, and um, yeah, no production this year, unless something happens, we have a super long summer and this flower get to, to produce, but behind it, I have the black Hungarian, that is like jalapenos, and there are, I do have some nice peppers there, behind that I have a fish peppers, that the plant is looking good, but I don't see flower or fruit. This is the hot Hungarian wax that is producing nicely. That I actually should pick a few peppers from these plants here. Then I have some jalapeno. Uh, I got some wrong seeds or something because they are way too late. Usually this is, is supposed to be an early jalapeno and it was always one of the biggest producers here. And now they are just starting to, to develop. So. I don't know. And then is another staple of mine that is the espalette. But I do have one here growing. I see behind this jungle of poppies, there's another one. Another one behind there. So here we got the peppers, another bunch of poppies. Then we have a nice uh, echinacea, echinacea, the cornflower. This is a white one. Look how beautiful they are, these flowers. And it, put up so many you can see all the, the open one and then there's again another maybe even more amount of them that they still have to open behind here we can see i have a little field of corn popcorn a little bunch of popcorn hopefully i'm gonna get something they're still not pushing out anything but we'll see Got a lonely borage plant here. Oh, there's somebody going at it. Oh, 
guy. Let me see. Yeah. Let me see the flower. It's probably one of the most beautiful color you can find in a garden. I think the this I don't know how you can call it blue or purple from the borage. Right here we have the asparagus that are finished, obviously the season. And you can see under there, that's one of the most difficult part to weed because I don't want to ruin the spears, so it's difficult to go. You, you have to really go hand pick uh, all of the um, uh, weeds. So maybe next year I'm going to put some kind of mulch just to help with that. Let's go around the corner here. And we have uh, uh, the wheat. Uh, I love, I love the look of it. I like to come here and just feel the the, the, the grain get, getting plump, you know. And it's a nice. Uh, it makes a nice border, so it really, it really has a like a an aesthetic reason in the garden. I think for anybody that likes to to landscape to make something. Nice to look beside them, productive. Then here, in the center of this circle of rocks, is the lamb's ear uh, plant. Uh, there is some uses for it, so it's not just uh, to touch it, because you can stop touching. When, once you feel it, it's like really the, the ears of a... This is a, uh, it's called lamb for that reason, but I never actually touched lambs here. But it feels like, you know, the puppies... You know, like a, when is an animal is small, it's very soft here. And right here is the other. This is the one I purple is planted. That is the opium poppy. That are just like uh, I think that they look way better than the wild regular one. They are way bigger, a little bit more complex. The flower with the the pattern of their leaves, and then you get with this big bulbs left that are really um, nice to look at. It's a nice, uh, nice look. So on this side, I'm probably going to go all the way around because it looks better. So I'm just going to show you what is in the front. We had there some fennel that is going to flower, you can see. It does all those yellow flowers. Here is another animal that is just some... Uh, runner beans that I don't see any beans growing but it's full of flower we'll see right here is purple uh, cones of flower is the anise sea soap and uh, it's nice it has a nice smell of anise and um, they look too it's very nice same with the catnip the smell is not that nice uh, I don't know if you ever smell catnip but it's not that appealing, at least to me. And it looks a little like a stinging nettle, but uh, it's kind of taking over too. So I'm going to have to maybe keep my eye on it. But it's another, another nice plant I like to have. This is a red cornflower that is stuck in between here. I got some salad burnet there. And behind there, it's the bee bulb down there. Okay, continuing on this side, I have the tarragon, that is this one right here, it's pretty tall, tarragon there, and the uh, winter savory here, that is uh, struggling this year, because it was actually there where it started, but it died, but luckily it survived, and it pushed a little towards this side, toward the edge, so I, I don't want to touch it, let it get the strength back, and then we'll see. He soap behind. And coriander here, you can see. Look, okay, step. You got all the flowers, no? It's these pretty white lace flowers. Oh, there's some ants working on it. And then you got your coriander seeds. There they are. So, very nice plant to have to, to let it go to flowers. Uh, uh, it looks very nice. And uh, the love edge, it's clearly finished, it did its thing, it went to seeds, uh, oh there they are, you can see here, these are the seed pods, and um, yeah, it looks very nice in spring, then it just go downhill from there, I had 
down here somewhere. Uh, I don't remember where it went, but uh, there was some. Um, uh, I don't remember how it's called. There was a plant. Anyway, we'll see if I find another one. Here is a thyme. Very nice. One of probably the nicest uh, herbs, spice when they are in flower. This is a lemon thyme. The smell is, is uh, fantastic. And also the, the look of these small uh, lavender flowers. Beautiful. Chives also, they did their thing. So now they are just drying up and they're, they finished their cycle, I guess. This is, was a parsley that came out of nowhere. I have no idea where it came from because I don't recall uh, planting here a parsley. Also, it's not supposed to, to survive winter. And even the parsley that I had last year was the, the Italian leaf parsley. This is a curly leaf parsley. So I have no idea where it came from. But uh, maybe, I don't know, maybe it was with another plant, you know, from the uh, garden center that the you know, sometimes the seed went in and maybe germinate. I don't know. Pansies. This is a oregano. One kind of oregano right here. You can see this uh, is like a, uh, almost white flower, I would say. This is another kind of oregano that has almost pink flowers. And another back here, they are now that they are getting mixed, you can see on this side, you can see this is the, the darker uh, brownish it looks a bit, and then with the pink flower. And then on this side, you can see the center is the lighter green with the white flower. And back there again, we have that darker color with the pink flower. So right in this mixed, there's two varieties that they just got mixed up, but you can still make out one that is mostly in the center. It's like green with a white flower, and then we have one piece here, one piece here of the other one. Right here, I have a um, purple basil. It's just an annual that I put this year. It's doing very well. And here we have the, uh, the one that I was telling you. I was looking on the other side because I had a small one of that. Of this one growing there. Uh, how is it called? Bloody Dock. It's uh, uh, I, I don't remember the name. I call it uh, a different way, but nothing today. I can't remember. Anyway, you know what I'm talking about. So it was way big. I moved it. It suffered a lot. Luckily, I got this one back. Then I had another growing here that I put it in a vase and it's doing well. And on top of that, I found one on its original spot somewhere there. So uh, it should be fine next year. One of the three, I'm sure, is going to come back. Right here, it's a stevia that I planted early in season. It died down. You can see the dead stems here because we had frost. And I thought it was gone, but it put back some growth, not much. I don't know what I'm going to do with it because for sure it's going to die over the winter. But uh, uh, it's nice to see how that they always keep trying to survive the plants. Here I have my original sage. This is one of my oldest plants. Every year it comes back. It flowers too. So I'm very pleased with that plant. Then we have a small little uh, thyme. Which kind of time it is? It's French thyme. This one I added this year. Another beautiful sage. This is the three color sage because you have like two colors. You see the white, the green, and then you got this little purple when the leaves just start to open. Nice, beautiful plant. Hopefully, it's gonna come back. It's kind of a push. I tried already once and I lost it, uh, but I'm gonna keep trying. And right here, this one is a weed along that one, but. Right here in the middle, these are some garlic chives that I started from seeds uh, this year. And uh, hopefully they're going to uh, come back and make a nice little area there. And those two onion looking things in the back, they are the Egyptian walking onion. And you see here, one is dead, but it's kind of 
Yes, the little onions. Maybe the one we're gonna touch the ground. They're gonna set up here. Let's see if it's gonna work like that. So those one, hopefully, they're gonna multiply and make a little bunch right here. And that's it for the herb garden. It's uh, one of my favorite corner of the garden, and uh, it never disappoint. It always uh, work out. Maybe one year a plant doesn't do that well, but it's very rare. They usually they all, all of them usually they, they do well. You know that they grow back. Even the one that something happened, they, they usually just take a while and then they, they just come back. So that's it. That's everything I had to, to show you today. Thanks for watching. Take care.